Hi, and welcome to my session on how to use Kami in your K3 classroom. Kami is your digital classroom hero, your digital paper and pencil. Students and you can learn how to collaborate and create together. Hi, my name is Megan Barnash, and I am an instructional technology coach for Scottsdale Unified School District in sunny Arizona. I've been a Kami hero since 2018. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at BarnashMegan and make sure you use hashtag KamiConnect to share out any of your findings from today. Are you ready? Let's get started. As an educator, you know that there are multiple learner styles. We have the auditory, those listening students. We have the physical learners and we have those visual learners. Kami can help us with all of those. Let's start with a basic example. Teachers can share diagrams. Students can use voice commenting features where they can then express with their words what they learned. They could also use drawing tools to annotate and to visually show. Where another student may need some extra help learning and rereading for that auditory purpose. Kami can support all three of those learner styles. This first activity, that diagram activity, you might also have an activity that's similar where you have different components, such as a crossword, a missing letter, an unscramble the word, and even that read and copy type activity. As you can see, a student may use a tool such as the drawing tool to circle for that crossword. They can even use the highlighting option. For that missing letter, depending on that skill level of your student, Maybe those older students, those third grade students, may be able to use the typing to really focus on those technology skills. Those littler kids may use the drawing tool and use their finger or a stylist to touch their screen. The next piece asks for them to read and copy. Again, depending on what the technology skill level is of your students, you may have them read it out loud to you side by side or you can use the voice and or commenting tool, that video commenting tool, that they can read it on their own and then they can copy it again with their fingers or using the typing tool. What's awesome about having the students be able to record themselves is that teachers and parents or any other support staff working with them has a record. Data gathering is so vital for these little ones that Kami is a great way that you can have all of that in one location. Kami builds on student presentation skills. As I mentioned earlier, students, regardless of age or grade, love to share what they already know. For example, you might do a star student type activity where they go home, they show you how to make their favorite sandwich. They show off their pet that's walking next to them. Or it could be a science lesson where you talk about parts of plants in the classroom and you're completing that activity, but then they go home and they're able to show you exactly the parts of the plants that they learned about in class. For children with reading difficulties, a text-to-speech tool could be extremely beneficial. With Kami, emergent readers can use that text-to-speech tool to highlight keywords that they don't understand to help them understand a passage better. In a second, we're gonna to go to a third grade level reading that the teacher allowed the student to have the text read to them and use the dictionary function to be able to identify keywords. This then helped the student understand those comprehension questions that were noted at the end. Let's open up that third grade text. Once you highlight the words that you want and release your pointer, the sentence will be read aloud for you. My vacation with grandma and grandpa White Cloud was great. Students can change the speed, they can change the voice, and they can loop over and over and over again. Students can also just highlight individual words. Grandma. Which can help them. This example does lead to the questions listed below that again, the student can highlight and have read aloud to them. Social emotional development is a hot topic for our K3 little kids. 
We need to be aware that they can create positive relationships through mindful practices. Cami allows us to create a mindful journal. Here's a great activity that you can do with your kids. Have them sit mindful with their spines straight. Take three deep, slow breaths. Ask them, how do you feel today? Where do you feel your mood? Do you feel heavy like clay or light like a feather? Give them a moment to self-reflect. Then have them open up a blank document and be creative. Give them the space that they can use to just express how they feel. You can track these over time. You can either continue by adding one page after another, or you can have them organize it into a folder that you can share with support staff, with other teachers, with parents, with whoever. But students then have a creative space that they can go to. Mindfulness really will allow them to self-reflect and be one with themselves. Let's look at a fun whole class or individual type activity. Let's open up a digital book report. As we can see, this is a book report created by a student. The teacher opened up a Google slide and created a very simple template. It starts with a blank page and goes down to have four grids. Regardless of your age, students can still develop a storyline. This teacher allowed parents to type and students to draw. I've also seen it where teachers have a collaborative whole class book report where each student creates their own adventure starting from the previous student and moving on. For example, I might start page one and you may do page two and then through our students, we then have a full book. How fun is that? It's like a little create your own adventure. This activity is one of my favorites. It was a fun little challenge. A colleague of mine came to me and said, hey, I found this activity on Teachers Pay Teachers and I'd love to make this digital so that I can use this with my in-class students and my online students. I'm always up for a good challenge. So what I did is I was able to create and utilize those same images, giving credit to those original creators, and instead students can now use this by joining a virtual call in whatever platform you may use. So for example, Google Meets or Zoom. And those students can now play a game together. It's now a digital game board. You can see that the teacher was able to put the directions on the side of the document and include a virtual dice. The student in person may be able to roll that dice and be there, but that person online may not so they can use that virtual dice to work together. They can then drag their game pieces around. For example, this one, we were able to drag the hamburger patty on after we spelt the word correctly. Think about all the different fun activities that you can do that aren't necessarily annotation, but gamification. What's really cool about my job is I get to travel around to all different K3 classrooms. One of my favorite activities to do with them is to have the discussion about what it means to be a digital citizen. Think about that. Those are some pretty big words for those kids. We can break them down. We can say, what does it mean to be digital? And even our kindergartens know what it means to be digital. They bring up all different real life examples. They talk about how they know what their phones are or their tablets. Third graders will mention their in-class laptops and things like that. We then talk about what it means to be a citizen. And even though that's a harder word, we start talking about a neighborhood and how we can walk down the street and wave at a neighbor. It's important that we understand that in our digital environment, we also have neighbors and we have to value each other. For teachers, Cami allows us to look through the document and see who's been working on a document. We can teach our students that it's important to respect each other's property. Just like we respect each other at the park, we pick up after each other, we need to also do the same in a digital world. But it's a little bit different. We don't necessarily delete each other's work, but we are aware that what I do does affect someone else. 
I love these conversations with these kids. And being a digital citizen is key and vital to the growth of our students. Use Kami as your interactive whiteboard. Regardless if you have a smart device in your classroom or not, you have the ability to put whatever you want up on that front board and have students collaborate on it. This is my teaching device. I have a Chromebook and it allows me to flip it all the way over to be a tablet. How exciting. I can walk around the classroom and I can collect data right at my fingertips. I can do an individual conference with my students and have an ongoing data binder. I can even share that with parents for instant feedback. By having an interactive document in front of you, you can even get those K3 students to stand up, get them to the front of the board, touch the screen if you have an interactive whiteboard. They can then circle key pieces of information, highlight keywords, draw shapes, and even do some matching activities. How fun could it be even if you weren't doing it individual, but whole class? One really cool newer feature of Kami is the restriction tool. When you create a Kami assignment through Google Classroom, you'll now get a screen that asks you which tools do you want to use. For example, if I was doing that crossword activity, maybe I restrict them to only use the draw tool or the highlight tool. Maybe I restrict them to using the speech to text tool because I'm asking them to read aloud. I don't want them to be able to hear the sentence before they submit. Maybe I want them to use just stickers and just the drawing tool for their mindful journal. It allows you to really look at what the key task is and what they need available to them. Kami offers a safe and collaborative space for your kids to work. With this day and age, we don't always have our students right next to us. Kami allows us to collaborate regardless of the environment that they're in. Make sure you're reaching out to those kids at home. Make sure you're reaching out to those parents as well. You can offer real-time feedback just like that. Thank you for hanging out with me today. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Follow me on Twitter. And again, use hashtag CamiConnect to share out anything that you learned today. I always want to hear from educators from around the world. We have so much to share. Thanks again, and I look forward to hearing from you.